When it comes to managing your table data, I'm talking about how to enter, modify, update, and delete your records. And the records that we're going to be working with will be in the employees table. Double click. How many records do we have? There you go. Down below in the record navigation bar, a total of 47. Now to enter in a new employee, a new record for the new employee, I need to get to the last blank row in the table. And I can do it one of many ways. I can either come over here and click and drag the scrolly bar down to the last blank row and then go ahead and click in and start typing in the data. Or let me hit the F5 key on the keyboard. It's a shortcut key that takes me to the first cell in the table. And other ways to get to the last blank row within the table is, well, you can come up here on the Home tab to the Records group. You can delete, save, or, hey, create a new record. And you can see when I hover over it, you also have the shortcut keys, Control Plus. Let's go ahead and click on it first. It takes me to the last blank row, F5 key again. And then the shortcut keys, let's try those. Control Plus takes me to the last blank row. Hit the F5 key again. And then finally, down below on the record navigation bar, we've got our Hey, new blank record. Click on it, and there we go. Last blank row. Now, when it comes to entering in a new record, well, this is your first time within the table, and you're like, I'm not sure what this field's about. Well, there's some indicators like, okay, employee ID is one. Second of all, you can see that the numbers are sequential, so 45, 46, 47, oh, 48. If they're still not getting it, remember, in an earlier training video, when you design your tables, in the design view, you can type in notes for this field, that will appear down below on the status bar that hopefully they'll look at. Well, if they watch my training video, they'll probably look down here and get a little bit more instruction about what's supposed to be entered into this field. Like if it's supposed to be their social security number and these are all mistakes, or from this point forward, we're going to have their social security numbers. What we can do is we can go back to the design view. And over here, again, description is optional for the employee ID field. But let's go ahead and just keep it simple. SS pound for social security number. Let's go ahead and change the views. Click on view. Of course, you got to save it before you change it. Okay, yes. And then anywhere in this field that you click for any record, even the last blank row, you can see the prompt down below on the status bar, the text, social security number. Let's do control plus to get to the very end. And if they still don't get it, Maybe they haven't watched this training video and they're not looking down below on the status bar and they type in some text. Well, I'm trying to hit two birds with one stone. So they're typing in text into what appears to be a numbers field and they misspelled the word the. When they hit the tab key, oh, they're going to get a plethora of options. First of all, it says the value entered does not match the number data type in this column. So you can't have any text in here. What are you doing? It says enter in a new value or convert the data in this column to the text data type. So you convert all this into text, which the text data type will accept both numbers and text and a mixture of them. Now, keep in mind, if this is a field that you want to use in a query later on to multiply another field by, like if it wasn't the employee ID, if it was the employee salary, and then you had another field about their hours they worked that week, they both have to be number fields. It can't be a text field. So you don't want to convert it to text. For me, well, I said it's a number field. I'll leave it as such. I won't convert it into the text data type. And so let's go ahead and say enter new value. So it updates it. And then I'll type in a new number. But before I do that, you get a little lightning bolt here. When you hover over it, it's the autocorrect options. Remember, Access looked at that misspelled word and said, I'll fix it. And maybe you didn't want it fixed. So click on the lightning bolt and you can change it back to T-E-H because maybe that's the name of the person. Or you can stop automatically correcting T-E-H so it'll stay that way. Or you can look at the autocorrect options, click on it, opens up a little teeny tiny window. So when I type in where it says replace the misspelled word T-E-H, you can see down below it's in the database. When somebody types in that, it's going to automatically, when you leave that field, fix it. So replace what you type here with that down below. If you don't want that, you can delete it. In which case, from that point forward, you can type in TEH all you want, and it won't automatically fix it. And you can go ahead and do your own autocorrect options. If somebody types in this, maybe as an April Fool's joke, types in your name, you can replace it with, he is so awesome. In any case, that's besides the point. But let's keep it simple. Let's click Cancel. If you want to access the autocorrect options, but you don't get the lightning bolt because maybe you moved on and you want to go back and update that, well, you can go backstage, click on the File tab, go down to Options, go to Proofing, 
And there you go, autocorrect options, same window. That way we don't have to wait for lightning bolt or type in a misspelled word if we want to go ahead and update that. So let's go ahead and just type in a number as it says, hit the tab key and continue on. And let's see, last name. And then you'll notice as I come over here to the end, I'm getting to the home phone number. Well, I can't see it. I assume it's home phone number. You can go ahead and click and drag the scrolly bar over, or you can just leave it as is, and then continue to hit your tab key to move over to the next field, the column, and then to go back so you don't have to lift your hands off of the keyboard, you can hold down the shift key and hit tab, and it takes me back, shift tab, back, then tab, tab, and now we're to the home phone number field. So when I start typing in a phone number, you'll notice that automatically we get some symbols in there. That's called an input mask. It's supposed to help the person inputting with this mask field here to guide them to what to enter into that field. Because if I just said home phone number, maybe they'd just type in the number without the area code, and maybe they wouldn't use dashes. So to control the front end user's input, and we'll learn about this in a later training video, how you can set up your own input mask for things like home phone number, zip code, like maybe you want the dash with the extra four numbers instead of just the five digit number. In any case, watch for that. So here when I see this, I'm like, oh, they want the area code, and you've got basically a line for each number. So when I type in, it erases that bottom line there, and I can continue on, hit the tab key. Now, some shortcut keys to help you out here. If you see in the record above, in that field, data that's going to be the same as what you want to enter in here, well, I could easily type it in 300, but the shortcut key is control apostrophe and it duplicates what it sees above. Cool, huh? Let me click and drag and scroll over, then hit the tab key. And then for the higher date, you can go ahead and type it in, like 4 slash 4 slash, and you don't have to type in 2000 and something or whatever it is. You can just type in the last couple of digits, like 07, hit the tab key. Automatically goes back and changes it to 2007. Let me hold down the shift key, hit tab to go back. You can do it that way, or you can pick the data picker, click on that little icon there, and then choose another date. That works. Or let me go ahead and hit the backspace key several times to get rid of it. If you want today's date, then go ahead and the shortcut key for that, instead of typing it in, is control colon. And let's go ahead and tab over. Now, how do you save your record? Well, there's one of many ways you can just close out, but I try not to get into the process of closing out of things because it's more of a habit. I mean, in Access, when you're in Tables, you're entering in Records, if you close out, it'll automatically save it. But again, I don't want to get caught up in that because other Microsoft applications aren't so kind. You close out without saving it, you lose, well, everything. So you can go ahead and just hit the Tab key to go to the next record down below. Hold down the Shift key, hit Enter. You can, of course, come up here on the Home tab in the Records group and click Save, or you can come over here and you see that little pencil? It means it's in right mode. You can click on that and automatically gets rid of it and saves it. Or you can use the arrow keys if you're here. You know, if you want to make a change and you do, let's do 20, arrow up to the next record, automatically saves your change down below. If you want to search for data within your table, you can either eyeball it like, oh, there's sales representative right there, or better yet, Come down below and click in the search box and then start typing sales. Well, we got sales, but I'm looking for sales representative. So let's come back here and keep on typing REP. And there it is. Now that's record number nine of 48. So if I want to continue my search, hit the enter key and then it goes to record 24 of 48. Hit enter. There's number three. Well, that's Rocky Mountain sales rep. Oh, well, see, it's not an exact search. Hit enter again. There's sales representative. So if I want to get a little bit more particular, something that has more criteria than just what I type in here, then come up here on the Home tab, go to the Find group, and click Find. Or, as you can see when I hover over it, you got the pop-up that says you can use the shortcut keys Control F. In any case, do that or click on the button. It brings up the window. What do you want to find? I want to find Sales Representative. And where do I want to look? Well, the current document as opposed to, well, hey, I'm already in that field. If I select current field, then it doesn't search in any of the other fields. So if I have sales representative in other fields, but I just want to focus on the title field, well, current field will work. And then as far as the match, any part of the field that has sales representative in it, or do you want the whole field to have sales representative in it and nothing else? Or 
Do you want just the start of the field that contains cells representative and then whatever comes after it doesn't matter as long as it starts with that? Let's go ahead and do the whole field. And then as far as the search goes, you can search the entire field, the title field, or you can start at that point and go up or down. That point meaning the current record that it's in. Let's go ahead and choose all and click find next. And it found one, find next. When you see the button highlighted like that, it means it's active. You can just hit the enter key on the keyboard and it goes through until it finds them all. And then it says, okay, our search is done. We didn't find any more than what we already found. Okay. Now, if you want to go ahead and after you find something, replace it with something else, like instead of cells representative, let's go to the replace tab. Of course, we still want to find it. How about if we replace it with sales rep? When it's abbreviated like that, it just sounds cooler. And so let's go ahead and look for that. We'll keep the options the same and say find next. Well, probably has to refresh our search, so which brings up a good point. If we close out of here and I want to do a replace, you can bring up the find window, control F, and it brings up find and replace. Click on the replace tab, or if you want to bypass that extra click, let me close out, control H, and then it takes us to the replace tab and then find and replace window. Okay. Now let's go ahead and click on Find Next so we can refresh the search and it starts over and it found Sales Representative. Let's go ahead and replace that. It replaces it, goes to the next one, and then I can replace that, replace that, or just replace all. It says, are you sure you want to do this? You won't be able to undo it. Well, we weren't able to undo it when we were hitting Replace in the first place for each record. This is for all the records that contain Sales Representative, which we have just a few more. So yeah, we'll continue. And did it do it? Well, there's one. Oh, how about if we go ahead and we type in sales rep? We can stay on the replace tab as long as I don't hit replace and find sales rep. There's the next one and the next. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's go ahead and close out of that and learn how to delete records. Let me do control plus shortcut keys to get to the last blank row because I want to delete doc. Let's say she is no longer an employee. So to get rid of a record, and this will do it permanently because you have no way to bring it back. So you may not want to do it or you may want to create a backup of the table, which we talked about in an earlier training video. In any case, to delete a record, you can do it one of many ways. You can either go ahead and click on the row header, that little gray box that shoots across the row. Well, you can see the black arrow. When you click on the gray box, it means that it's selecting everything over to the right. And you can hit the delete key on the keyboard and it says you're about to do it. Are you sure? We can say no. So I can show you the other options. You can also right click on the row header and delete the record or you can well if the entire row is selected you can come up here on the home tab to the records group and click delete but if it's not and you got the cursor flashing in a field you don't get the delete option until you click on the drop down arrow to delete the record and of course if you're in here and you accidentally delete something in there it's in write mode, so just hit the escape key to get back out of it so it doesn't accept the change. So let's go ahead and click on the row header, hit the delete key, and say yes. And, and then finally, you can add a totals row. In other words, below the last blank row, you can have a row that totals up, well, those fields that contain numbers. And to add a totals row, come up here on the Home tab to the Records group, and there you go. Click on it, and it adds it. So you got your blank row, but below that you have a row that will total up. Well, you could do it for the number here, but I'll click on the drop down arrow. But, you know, adding up an employee ID yeah, wouldn't work for me. But you get the idea. You can go ahead and do that. And we wouldn't do it for text fields, so let's go ahead and scroll over. And, of course, not for number fields, like who wants to add up zip codes? No, thank you. But we can come over here to the weekly hours. And, again, that's the last row because the one above that you see that little asterisk? That means that that's the new record row, so we don't want to mess with that. Again, it's the last row this time is the totals. Click in it, click on the drop down arrow, and let's get the average for weekly hours, and it's 36.8. And our goal is 37. Anything less than that, people are doing more than just taking vacation. They may be out sick, and so, well, we're not meeting our weekly hours average here. And then for the hourly rate, we can click in there, click on the drop down arrow. And you can find out who earns the most, hourly, maximum. It's 120. Good gravy. Who's doing that? And then we can go ahead and scroll over, find out who it is. And, oh, gosh, we ought to at least give them a bump down, $119. That'd make me feel better. And then just go ahead and click off, and that total roll stays where it's at until you come back down. 
do any updates by clicking on the drop down arrow or just coming up here on the home tab to the records group and deselecting totals and it's gone. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.